Um, of course, uh, not all disasters are foreseeable or avo avoidable. There is obviously a limit to what we can do to prevent uh, the uh, onset of disasters, but we can, um, we can uh, certainly uh, minimise the extent of the loss, and that is proven. Uh, it is proven on the basis of experience, for instance, dealing with uh, the issues of floods. Flood mitigation works in Lismore illustrate the return to investment in mitigation and prevention. In 2005, asked, after completing a $19 million levy, Lismore experienced a 1 in 10 year flood. The levy saved about $15 million in recovery costs on that occasion alone and also played an integral part in minimising flooding in Lismore in, in subsequent years. Similarly, at Gawler in South Australia, the construction of flood control, a flood control dam and associated works cost some $20 million and it presents significant savings in a region which floods on average every 10 years. In November 2005, Flooding in nearby Virginia and surrounds resulted in widespread damage to homes, businesses and infrastructure with agricultural losses alone estimated to be about $40 million. Yet even with the combined efforts of all levels of government and the private sector, our current spending on disaster mitigation activities is only a small portion of the cost of rebuilding uh, after uh, events but specifically after this summer's events. Uh, we would not accept uh, that situation, uh, as I've said, in respect to our preventive capability in the counter-terrorism counter area, for instance, uh, and we should not uh, accept uh, that limitation on our capability in respect to the emergency management area. There is no question that as a nation, we need to find ways to increase our collective investment in dollars, in time and effort uh, in these planning, organisational and mitigation uh, aspects. Uh, and we need to look at the breadth of action required uh, beyond, uh, beyond simply our emergency response capability. We see that many of these initiatives extend far beyond the capability of our emergency responders. Uh, for instance, it involves uh, more detailed thought and analysis of our urban and rural land planning, uh, the creation and enforcement of appropriate standards uh, and building codes, the examination of appropriate de development uh, approval processes, indeed cooperation at all levels of government. And it also involves the way in which individuals and governments address the risk. All levels of government are looking at many of these issues as well as the issue of flood mapping, uh, for instance, capability develop development, emergency warnings, volunteer issues as a community ages, uh, that is a particularly significant issue, broader community engagement, risk assessment, communication in a crisis and critical infrastructure protection obviously. Governments certainly do not have a monopoly or knowledge uh, of ideas in the field. It's open to organisations such as ASPE uh, to contribute to ongoing public debate. Uh, you do do that. Uh, and I thank you for it. You are performing a valuable, uh, valuable public service in evoking public debate, and the debate that you evoke inevitably uh, has its own influence uh, and contribution on the development of broader government policy. But ultimately, whichever paths we choose will involve difficult choices and some hard decisions, uh, particularly in this age of fiscal responsibility. But in this area in particular, I can tell you that the old adage, uh, being penny wise and pound foolish, is very much relevant. Um, in some cases, uh, I believe to achieve long-term savings, but more significantly to prevent loss of life and injury in the future, uh, it is necessary to require governments and businesses um, to spend more money up front to make those long-term savings to rebuild our infrastructure, not just the way it was before, but in a different way so that it's able to withstand future disasters, referred to obviously in the natural disaster relief and recovery arrangements, but more broadly through the community 
as betterment, uh, but that goes to the heart of building disaster resilience, and that is a dialogue that clearly we are having with the Queensland Government in particular with the massive infrastructure bill that is taking place now, uh, and uh, there is tremendous cooperation and uh, acknowledgement of that need, uh, but it is unquestionably going to be a challenge for governments at all levels uh, as we strive to do that and do that effectively. In terms of the need for all governments to work together uh, that I've referred to, there has been, there has been considerable advance uh, in recent months. The Council of Australian Governments uh, signed off on the National Strategy for Disaster Resilience. That strategy sets out the priorities of all Australian governments for building disaster resilient communities across Australia. It's the first step in a long-term process to develop sustained behavioural change. This will require a concerted whole of government effort as uh, demonstrated by the importance that the Prime Minister and State and Territory leaders uh, have given to endorsing this strategy at last month's Council of Australian Government. It acknowledges precisely what I've said, that our capabilities aren't simply our response capabilities, they also involve other, uh, other government responsibilities such as significantly uh, planning, uh, planning decisions, uh, many of which are made at a local government level, uh, building codes, uh, Australian standards uh, and indeed strategies to develop uh, community resilience including uh, communication and command and control strategies. Uh, also as part of that, and reference has been made to the contribution ASPE has made uh, in respect to the topic of insurance and at the last MCPEM or the Ministerial Council of Emergency Management Mi Ministers I distributed the day after it had been released uh, the report uh, on insurance uh, which was taken on board by ministers uh, to their respective, uh, respective departments. Uh, but disaster insurance and the challenges of ensuring that it is accessible, affordable and appropriate have featured strongly in public debate uh, during this disaster season. We do know uh, that uh, the uh, insurance does reduce the final financial impact on one party by spreading it across the broader community. Insurance coverage by individuals, small business and even governments is an effective way of addressing the risk that, can, that, that, that they can face from natural disasters. The government has recognised that there is a need to look more broadly at this issue through the review of the disaster insurance that was recently announced by um, my colleague, the Honourable Bill Shorten, the Shadow Treasurer. The review will concentrate on insurance arrangements for individuals and business for damage and loss associated with flood and other natural disasters. And ASPE indeed is uh, facilitating in the next few weeks a round table with experts uh, in the area and in respect to uh, mitigation measures generally uh, so that we can feed uh, the expert contribution into that review process. There are of course a range of models that governments around the world have adopted to address this issue. They are referred to in the ASPE report uh, if uh, anyone is interested and I know a number of you will be. These include the United States National Flood Insurance Program and the United Kingdom's Statement of Principles on the, princi on the provision of flood insurance which aims to provide more affordable flood insurance for consumers through cooperation between the UK government and the insurance sector. Uh, and without ruling in anything or ruling out anything as a politician does, certainly before there is a review, uh, I won't be saying anything on the other hand that will limit our options, but to uh, keep open the ways of examining ways in which other governments work with their citizens and indeed insurance providers to build their community's ability to bounce back from disasters, in summary, uh, to be resilient. The government's disaster insurance review will also consider whether existing recovery funding arrangements should be supplemented by a natural disaster fund such as that which has been in place in New Zealand over many decades and will certainly be called on in respect to Christchurch. Uh, one advantage of that when I met uh, with the New Zealand uh, Minister uh, was the fact that there will be 
a substantial investment uh, of, from that fund into the New Zealand economy as part of the, rest, uh, part of the recovery and restoration works at a time that the community uh, greatly needs it. These sort of things are the sort of issues that we will be examining. The Prime Minister has said that the possibility of a natural disaster fund is a long-term conversation. The conversation is well underway and the government looks forward to the report of the, of the review which is due later in the year. Uh, we are conscious also of the fact that we do not want to uh, have at a, uh, at a central level uh, a, a fund that is a disincentive to people taking their private initiative for their own moral responsibility uh, to take out appropriate insurance coverage. All these things will very much be part of the debate. Um, I can say that the government has also strengthened the natural disaster relief and recovery arrangements to ensure state and territory governments have adequate capital or insurance to fund the replacement and restoration of essential public infrastructure uh, and these measures were implemented following discussions with Senator Xenophon around the flood levy and they reinforced the principle, uh, the, the principle uh, that uh, the Commonwealth state arrangements are not designed to supplant or operate as a disincentive for insurance or other disaster mitigation. In, in effect, the natural disaster relief and recovery arrangements have become a de facto reinsurance scheme um, and uh, that is not intended, was not intended and inappropriately um, uh, being exercised uh, uh, at the current time. So. We believe the Commonwealth should continue to provide financial assistance to the states and territories through that scheme, through the natural disaster relief and recovery arrangements to ensure disaster affected communities receive the support and assistance that they need to rebuild. But given that the taxpayers of Australia effectively fund those recovery, not effectively, they do uh, refund those recovery arrangements, we are entitled to ask governments at all levels to maximise to maximise um, the uh, uh, their own insurance coverage, or uh, where insurance is not practical, and it is recognised that in some areas it will be impracticable to uh, impractical because of the expense uh, and the risk of the particular piece of infrastructure that is nonetheless an essential piece of public infrastructure. Uh, that other uh, funding arrangements uh, should be put in place and these are matters that we are prepared to discuss with the states.